Hello React Native Developers, what is going on? I cannot confirm nor deny that this might be the last episode with reanimated one. So welcome to Can It Be Done in React Native. This week, we swipe to delete. Hello guys, I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zoic Switzerland. In this week's episode, we are looking at the Uber Eats app and more specifically the cart and how you can delete items from the cart. So you can swipe from the right to the left. You have this red circle appearing that grows bigger and bigger the more you swipe. And then the its growth suddenly accelerates after reaching a certain threshold. So it makes the whole uh, background of the row red and the opacity of the minus icon disappears. The remove item appears and then you have two only two snap position. So this one remove item back to normal and actually you cannot swipe um, immediate directly to the left side. And then you can press remove item to remove the item. And when I first decided to do this episode, actually, I remembered that there's the a nice um, remove animation that you see in most apps when you, at least on iOS, when you swipe to delete. And uh, this morning when I decided to take a look again at the app, it looks like it has been updated. So now you have like a not so smooth uh, user interaction, but we're going to do it with the uh, nice animation. And potentially we can also add a third snap point to delete the item directly. So to be much more snappy. But for sure, we also want the, to be able to remove the item by pressing the button. So how would we do this in React Native? Well, we have two views overlaid on top of each other. So the row here you see with the uh, item name and the price and quantity on the left side. And we wrap it with a pan gesture handler. We clamp the translation value so that we cannot swipe from the right to the left. And we snap when we're releasing the gesture, we snap to either back to the, so to back to this position, this position here, or we could also uh, remove the item completely. So we look at the velocity. Redash provides us a function to know where we need to snap the item. And in the background element, we add a circle. So we use flex direction. So justify content, flex direction row, justify content end. So the circle is positioned positioned on the right side. We scale it depending on the translation value. So here, if I translate from minus 50 pixels, the radius of the circle is 25 pixels. And when we reach a certain threshold, let's say the translation is minus 60 pixels, we accelerate the way we calculate the radius of the circle. So if it's 10 pixel, radius of the circle is 5 pixel. If it's uh, 50 pixel, radius is 25 pixel. If it's uh, 60 pixel, it's going to be 35 or 40 pixels. And this will enable us to get the quickly, nicely, the uh, background to become red. And then we animate on the opacity of the remove item and minus icon. When we decide to swipe, either by swiping completely to the left side or by clicking remove item, we perform the animation that will go from the original height of the item to zero. We remove the item from the cart. So the cart is in a React state. And we use the call animation node to call back to the uh, 
JavaScript user lang to the React code to remove the item from the cart. So what do you guys think? Can it be done in React Native? Let's have a look. Guys, before we get started, one thing, if you are interested to learn the fundamentals of gestures and animations, I hope that you will check out my online course at startreactnative.dev. My goal with this course is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order to build incredible user experiences in React Native that will run at 60 FPS, even on low-end devices. And I started to build a new course entirely based on reanimated two. There are already four lessons available. The fifth one will be available this week. So if you are interested as well to learn about this new exciting API in reanimated two, I hope that you will check it out at startreactnative.dev. All right, guys, let's get started. Here I have a boilerplate project which you can download from the video description in case you want to follow along with the video. And I have a flat list where I render the items of my cart. So we have the item component that display here each line. So we have item layout where we have the nice price formatting quantity title. And we have a background view below that is going to be where you're going to see the remove element and the circle. So the first step, we're going to wrap this item layout here into a pan gesture handler so we can nicely translate it. And it used to require us quite some boilerplate to write a simple pan gesture handler. Now with Redash, it has uh, become quite easy. So pan gesture handler from React Native reanimated single child of a pan gesture handler is an animated view. That's the view we're going to translate. And we're going to create a gesture handler. And we get all the boilerplate for that from Redash. So gesture handler, use pan gesture handler from Redash. And so also we make sure to keep the identity of the gesture handler across different re-renders. So we have the gesture handler, we get translation, velocity, which we're going to need to calculate the snap point and the state of the gesture. So here we're going to calculate translate X value. So transform, translate X. So maybe just as a test, I'm going to assign translate X um, to be translation.x just to, just to try. So you see here, we can move the item nicely. Of course, it doesn't snap anywhere and we don't remember the offset position when uh, doing the gesture again. So I'm going to transform translate X because we're going to update translate X every frame, depending if the gesture is active, if the gesture has ended and we're snapping somewhere. So I'm going to use a value here and we need an offset X value, right? For instance, if I snapped to the position, which is at uh, 100 pixels from the left, let's say 100 pixel, I need to remember it, so I also need offset X. And we're going to write a use code block to um, calculate the proper values. So here, if the gesture is active, we return, we assign, sorry, to translate X uh, translate X is offset plus translation X. So offset X plus translation X. When the gesture ends, 
we store translate x into the offset x. So if state equals end, we assign to offset x translate x. So now we sh this code should do nothing but just remember the position. It seems to be complaining because of this one, maybe. Yeah, perfect. So here, no snapping, but we remember the position across time. Perfect. Now let's, when we release the gesture, we need to snap. And I have some snap points here. So I have zero. We go back to this position. I have minus 100, which is approximately this position. That looks good. And then we have minus with. So we swipe completely to the left. That looks good. We know where to snap thanks to Redash. There is a snap point function given an animation value, a velocity, and a list of snap points. It's going to select um, where to snap. And uh, I always use this function. You can build, you can look at how, I mean, it's a very simple uh, calculation. You can have your own implementation if you want uh, different sensitivity maybe to the function. Personally, I never had to, uh, to use a different algorithm than this one, but just, just in case. So we have translate x, velocity.x, and our list of snap points. So we know if the gesture ends, we know where to snap. And we are going to do just that. So we are going to assign translate x a timing function that goes from, it's not timing from reanimated, but from redash. Okay, that looks good. So we go from translate x to the snap value that we call two. And it's not snap points, but snap point. Okay. So here also I need to clamp the value. Okay, let me do it step by step. Um, so here I snap, snap back, looks good, snap completely. Perfect. I need to clamp now the value so I cannot swipe from the right, from the left to the right. And um, I'm gonna clamp here. I'm gonna clamp. Translate. Um, I just need to have or do min, min zero. So we don't want any uh, negative translation. So it's trans. No, max, max. Yes. Max of, so it translation, yeah. So any negative values will return zero instead. So no. It's the other way around. So it was min, min. Translation. Um, so now I cannot swipe this side and I can swipe this side. Okay, that looks good. Now, if we swiped completely, something needs to happen. So we're gonna, have a clock to know when the animation is over. So when the clock has stopped, we know that the animation is over. So we're going to create a clock here. And we know if the animation has finished, if um, we know if we should remove So to remove, um, so let me write should remove if two is equal minus with, which is our snap point here. So 
if we should remove. We are going to animate the height to go from to go to zero. And when the animation is over, call back to the JavaScript user land to remove the item from the state. So should remove, we're going to set an animation. So we're going to create a height animation value. So let me create it here. Use value zero. And um, I'm going to assign it here. So default value is not zero, of course, but the item height, which I have as a constant here. And we're going to assign height to go. So from height to zero. Okay, so now you see it disappears nicely, but actually it's still part of the uh, React state. So when the animation is over, so meaning if the clock is not running, we call back to the JavaScript user land. So we're gonna create a property called on swipe which we're going to receive as parameter here. On swipe. And, um, oops. Here, this one is a static list, so we're going to store it into a, a state, so it can become dynamic. So we have items, items set, items is use state, of default items. So here, data is items. And we need to provide an on swipe function here, on swipe. So um, we're going to copy the items array, so new items. So we make a copy here. And then we're going to do use splice. So new items index of item. And we remove one element. And then we set items to be new items. Now, so if I try here, it's not working on swipe. I am on swipe, that looks good. I'm wondering if I don't need to add on swipe here to the list of dependencies. Let me reload. So I needed to add on swipe to the list of dependencies, which makes sense because if items has changed, the uh, this function identity has changed, and if the fun a function identity has changed for one row, this whole block needs to be recreated. And since we use uh, you know, use value, use pan gesture handler, the things that needs to keep their identity, keep um, their identity. Pretty tricky, but it works well. Sorry, I have to reload like this. These days, I'm not sure why. I think the, if I do command D, nothing appears. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. So that looks pretty good. Now let's just do the background animation, right? Um, so in the background, we can add an, 
action component, which has like the remove text and the um, minus icon. Where? Ah, that's a minus icon. I was looking for an icon component, but obviously here we're just using a view. That's perfect. And um, so we're going to pass the um, translate x value. And what we're going to do here, just to make it easier, because we want only to work with positive values, I'm going to create a property called x, and then we're going to take the absolute value of translate x. Just to make it a little bit simpler. So we have x here, which is an animated node. And um, so we have our circle here. And we can create, assign it a size. So here we can assign size. And border radius is size divided by two. So we have height. So this, first of all, is an animated view. Yes. So we have height equal size, width equal size, and border radius. Let's have a look. So that looks pretty good. We need to change the opacity of the... Um, so we need to add the acceleration of the size and the opacity on the text and minus icon. So... <clears throat> We can create icon opacity and we interpolate on size. So input range, let's go, let's say from um, height minus 10 pixel, height plus 10 pixel. Here you can choose any value you want depending on how you want to customize the element. So uh, its opacity is at one and goes to zero. And it's the opposite for um, the text opacity. So text opacity. Is zero one. So let me assign these opacities. So icon opacity, it's an animated view. Oh. And here, we, um, so opacity is text opacity. Let's have a look. That looks pretty good, I like it. Can I do, just to simplify the code here, text opacity is one minus icon opacity. Yeah, perfect. So that's a bit simpler and uh, we need to scale the uh, icon. So we're gonna add a scale. And um, we're going to interpolate on size. And maybe we start at, I don't know, should we start at 20 pixels maybe? To, uh, no, 10 to 20 pixels, I don't know. I have no idea. Let's, we're going to take a look, see how it feels. But we go from zero, but 
on Android, we cannot have a scale of zero. So we're going to start from zero, zero, one, two, uh, one. And um, we need to extrapolate. Okay. Mm, no. So let's do 30, 40. I don't know. I have no idea. It's a bit too much. So 20, 30 maybe. Yeah, that looks good. Right? It's cool, huh? And now we should accelerate the size of the circle. Up. And you see here when the... Okay, let... <laughs> I'm getting carried away. Um, let's accelerate the size of the circle. So, size. If x is less than, let's say, height, here we can put really any value, we return x. And if not, we want to double the increment. So, to x, we're going to add. Um, I want to add x minus height. So if we are at uh, x is 55, we will have 70. Make sense? That should do the job, but not quite. So we also need to, um, of course, move translate the origin the center of the circle and so we're going to create a translate x so if um, we are less than height translate x is zero if not we add this value divided by two i think yeah that makes sense. I think that makes sense. We add half on the right side of whatever we incremented. So let me assign it. Let's have a look. Yes, it's cool, huh? And now, if I swipe like this, I want the... You see the remove text to disappear. So to the text opacity, we're going to multiply another opacity, which we're going to set if we are deleting the item. So text opacity, let's call it delete opacity, which is an animation node that we're going to receive as a property here. So we have delete opacity is an animated node. And we're going to create it here in item, right? So delete opacity use value um, of one. Default value should be one. If we are deleting here, we set the height, but we also want to set the delete opacity to go from 1 to 0. And we need to pass it as a property of action. Let's have a look. Oh, I have no items left in my cart. <laughs> so, phew. No, that doesn't look, it's not working. Mm -mm. Delete opacity. Oh, you know what? I should just set it to zero. Yeah. Perfect. Very cool. So we are almost done. Last step is we need to make this pressable and also trigger the same animation if uh, we press on the button. 
it's funny because usually can it be in React Native we are trying to reproduce uh, a user experience from an app we know and love here we we are doing a better I feel like user experience that actually is the existing app I when I originally picked the example I feel like um, the user experience was was quite different I feel like they updated the app in between but uh, there are other apps that uh, do provide an incredible uh, swipe to delete user experience and here you get a sense of uh, how it can be done in React Native. So let me uh, wrap this action into a touchable without feedback. And um, on press, we are going to set should remove to one should remove set value so should remove is we're going to change it to be a, an animation value use value of zero default value is zero and here if we should remove we set should remove to one and we move this condition outside the state dot end so it's cool because you see now the animation appears. So what I like about this is that we have a nice animation that can be triggered with either the gesture or um, imperatively from React Native. So that's a pretty cool way to direct uh, gestures and animation both ways either from the gesture or imperatively from a button guys i hope you enjoyed this example a fun swipe to delete user interaction that can serve as a strong foundation for any swipe to action example these are fairly common nowadays in mobile apps and as you can see they are fairly straightforward to implement in react native we really had to take care to understand the life cycle of our animation values and animation nodes because when triggering the action, we are very likely to trigger a re-render. I hope you guys can use this example as a recipe to integrate in your own apps and build incredible uh, swipe to action user interactions. Guys, I am looking forward to talk to you soon and in the meantime, happy hacking!